Estimator 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah, uh, yes, List Day. And uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start a new series, and it's going to be coming out every time we get a new set. And this one is going to be in celebration of the Savage Strike Special Edition. And that is the worst cards in whatever the current set of the game is. And obviously, because of the Special Edition came out, we're doing Savage Strike. This will be a supplementary series to go along with my worst cards in the, the main sets of the game to kind of give you guys something that's a little more current as well as some of the old school stuff so we get a bit of a smorgasbord here on the channel. But who wants to talk about good cards? Let's talk about bad cards. And with modern bad cards, a lot of them are just more wonky than anything else, so it's kind of hard to order them. So I would say that anything but number one is probably any order you want. But these are just 10 sneak peek trash can filler cards from the old Savage Strike. So let's get started with number 10. Number 10 is Salamangre Paro. I don't know what they were thinking when they decided to give Salamangrates this card. When your opponent's monster declares attack, you can special summon this card. God knows why you'd want to do that. It causes a replay. In attack position. Nice. If this card is special summoned, you can target one Salamangre Guard monster in your graveyard. Change this thing's attack to the attack of the monster in the graveyard. At most, you're gaining like 800 attack out of this. It's like the world's wonkiest battle fader. I don't... It also has the ability you contributed to gain 2,000 life points, because why the hell not? You can only use each of these effects once per turn. Oh, good good thing it's got that limitation. I have absolutely no idea what they were thinking with this. Salamangrates is a link deck. It's not really a link spam deck. It does play lots of links, but it doesn't make a giant link board. It just keeps swapping them for a new one. But they're still linking a lot, so giving them a monster that special summon itself on your opponent's turn during the battle phase is just really super awkward. They can't really use it to forward their game state. And then that 2,000 life point boost is, it might get you a game three close to time, I guess. It'd be certainly a cheesy way to win. I don't know what they're doing, but this was a really weird addition to the deck. Number nine is Shiranui Sword Saga. You can only special summon Zombieland Saga here once per turn. If this card is special summon, you can target one monster from the field, change its battle position, because it's 2005. If this card is banished, you, you can summon a token. Now I get, I, I understand why it's got that you can only special summon it once per turn clause, because after you synchro summon this thing properly, it'll go to the grave, and then because it is a zombie, it's in a zombie deck most likely, you could probably use a one of the bajillion zombie cards to bring this thing back and then keep banishing it with the Shiranui cards or some cheesy combo and then keep making the tokens and then you'll have a, a, a big a big link for oh the humanity they didn't even have the common decency to give sharon a tool that they could use to spam tokens on the board through a bunch of uh, really random convoluted loops just so they could try to at least establish some sort of board presence this i don't know why it's got all these stipulations at 1900 attack it's not doing anything and there's a lot better level five synchros so oh the poor guy Number 8 is World Legacy World Arc. This level 7 dark machine monster with fantastic typing has the following effect. Once per turn, you can open up this card and melt the face of every Nazi in the room. <laughs> Why did it have to be snakes? This card can be treated as two tributes for a tribute summon because it's 2005. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If a Link monster you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to special summon that monster that was destroyed, except during the damage step. Bad dates. Now, that's okay, I suppose. It's never really particularly good to run cards in your deck that are there to mitigate when your deck is somehow not working very well, and the fact that the Nightmare Package has built-in protection against this sort of thing means that if you're linking and you're linking properly, you really shouldn't need this kind of effect, and it's actually quite strange to even have this in your deck. Plus, uh, it's kind of difficult to get on the board. I'm not really sure what you're trying to do with it. And I don't even think you ever intended to special summon it, because its next effect is, when your opponent summons from their extra deck while you control this normal summon or set monster, you can Foolish Burial a monster out of your deck. Nothing like a setup card that's a tribute summon that requires your opponent to do something. Ugh. Yeah, this card's, um, this card's really rough. Junior! That's the wrong movie. Kalima! Kalima! Those are the only three Indiana Jones movies I will reference in this video, for there is only three, there is not four. Please do not mention the fourth. Drop dead. World Arc! Perform Pal Clay Breaker! 
Claybreaker is a level, what is this? A six. Earth Warrior, for sure, it's made of clay, I guess. It doesn't break clay, it is clay, or no. Well, yes. The 2,000 attack and 1,000 defense with the following effect. If this tribute summoned my, why? What is with the tribute summons? If it doesn't let you tribute summon like spells and traps like a true Draco, you'll, you'll never get this on board. It's no monarch. If this tribute summon monster battles an opponent's monster, you can have that monster lose 500 attack for each face up pendulum monster in your extra deck. Now, if your pendulum deck is working and you have a stack of guys in your extra deck, this thing would actually be a pretty good way of getting rid of some problem cards that are just giant beat sticks. However, the fact that you got a tribute summon it is pretty lame. The only way to get this on the field reliably would to be do your pendulum summon first and then sack one of the guys you pendulum summoned before it's a, to, to get it on the board, which means that, okay, in its worst case scenario, at least it has one guy in the extra deck you can use for its effect. That's kind of, I would, I will say that at least functions. However, it flies in the face of its second effect to do that. You don't want to pendulum summon with this thing on the field, you want it in your graveyard. Because the second effect says when you pendulum summon two or more monsters at the same time, because that's, why does it say that? That's just how a pendulum summon works. You can add this card from your graveyard to your hand. Yay. Recursion. Be cool if it's special summoned itself, you know, like to get around that tribute. <laughs> This is not the card that Perform Pals needed. If this was a Pendulum Monster, then maybe it'd be all right. Because that battle thing effect is all right, I guess, and it would kind of let them out certain things. But as a just a regular main deck monster, I have no idea why you'd run this in a Perform Pal deck. Edge of the Ring. No one makes me a salty Yu-Gi-Oh player seeing bad quick play spells because you had everything going for you. <laughs> You were a quick play spell. You're so versatile. How could you possibly suck? It's incredibly disrespectful. Edge of the Ring has the following effect. If your life points are lower than your opponent, you can target one monster your opponent controls, and they take burn damage equal to half that monster's attack. They can't take any more damage for the rest of the turn. Uh, at least it doesn't require a tribute summon. Here we go. A neg one for a mediocre burn effect because it's 2005. I have no idea what they were thinking with this. Um, as a quick play spell, I guess its best function would be at the end of a game three when it's getting really close to time in the round and you want to cheese the end of match procedures by hitting your opponent for some burn damage after using a card effect like, I don't know, Upstart Goblin or Solemn Strike so that your life points are now lower than your opponent and you're going to lose to your own card effect. So you use this stupid thing to cheese some damage. However, on average, this thing isn't doing very much and at max, it's probably only doing like 1,500 because your opponent's not going to have a monster of over 3,000 uh, attack power on the field that's like targetable and they will allow you to do this otherwise. More than likely, you're maxing out at around 1,500, which is enough to tie for that Solemn Strike. Mm. It'll outdo the Upstart Goblin, though. Big think. The fact your opponent takes no damage for the rest of the turn means if you open more than one of these, it's totally dead, and the fact that it's a quick play does not really, really help with that because you're just going to set two of them and bork two turns that you probably could have OTK'd in any other deck. So, you almost had it. If you really want to play a quick play spell you can cheese the end of a game with, just play Poison the Old Man. It's a better card, and on average, it'll give you a life point difference that's probably more than this will, and doesn't require your opponent to have anything. It's actually, that card probably is from 2005. This one hurts my soul. Lost time! As in, if you play this card, it's, it's lost time. Lost time is a normal trap card that reads, if your opponent's life points are 4,000 or higher, make your life points 1,000 less than theirs. You can only activate one of these per turn for some reason. As a normal trap card, ah, trap trick can get it. Broke. And again, at the end of a match, when you're getting close to the end of match procedures, this kind of thing might be able to help you out. Because if you have a massive life deficit with something like a hero lives or uh, red reboot or something like that, you can use this to catch up to your opponent and then close the gap of that a thousand, which isn't really that hard. Hell, Gaga Ga Cowboy gets you most of the way there, so it's not the end of the world in that very, very specific reason. However, if you're good at Yu-Gi-Oh, you probably wouldn't have played a life point having effect when it's like 30 seconds left in the game. <laughs> But, you know what? You're playing Lost Time, so I guess I can't put much faith into you. And know what's the worst part about this card? They put my UAs on here. They put my UAs, they're like, you know what's a bad deck? 
UAs. Let's plaster them all over this card, because this card sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. And you know what? That hurts. That hurts, man. Whenever you play UAs, it's lost time. Bricksville. They're the team from Bricksville. Orchestrated release. More like orchestrated minus. Tribute to Machine Monsters. Oh, worst card in the game. Uh, wrap it up. That's end of video. Do, 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 do. Click and subscribe. No, but seriously. Having a two tri tribute specifically, not, you know, send to the graveyard or discard from it. You know, tribute to specific typed monsters. Yeah. Sure, it's for orchists and they're all machines, so that's not the end of the world. All your monsters are probably machines anyway. But even still, landlocking a card like this into something like that is just really unfortunate. But okay, fine. You've went minus three to use the card and its cost. What do you get for it? Target one monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Oh god, it's a really bad Call the Haunted. Like seriously, just play Call the Haunted. Or back to the front if you don't want the MST negates shenanigans. No! Oh. I mean, sure, you can pick the position it's placed in. If that really matters to you for that minus. Or, you know what's legal right now? Monster Reborn. And you know what that is? A spell card. And it's free. And you can use your opponent's crap too. Just play that. I will not ever say that I'm an expert of Orcus. I'm not sure they can actually search this thing. They might be able to search this thing. I don't know though. So I guess that might be a bad added bonus. I'm not even going to look it up because... I don't care. But oh, there's more to this stinker! If your opponent controls a Link monster, you can summon two monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it negs you a bunch, and then to get its full effect, it's a specific situation. Oh, it's rough. And you know what that specific situation gets you? A neg one instead of a neg two. Because it's two... Because it's 1996. Not even! Monster Reborn! Dave is happy because he gets to talk about this card, but it sucks and that makes Dave sad. Number three is Squirt Squid. Don't demonetize me. That's literally what it's called. Squirt Squid's a level two water aqua. Ooh, toad. That has nothing to do with frogs or anything. Oh, <laughs> but what does it do? With that zero attack and 1800 defense, I'm getting Tetsuda Rot Newman flashbacks. So that's cool. Oh boy, I can't wait. What does this thing do? Does it stop your opponent's spells? Does it stop their traps? Can you can you pitch it off a swap frog? Well, that last one, I guess you probably could do. But the rest of that was was Bubkiss. I found it in a crackerjack box. <laughs> Squirt Squid has the following effect: If this thing is targeted for an attack, you can move it to an adjacent monster zone. Oh, it's a column card. And then you can special summon one token. It's like what is it, an ink token or something? Squid ink token to the zone that this thing used to be in, and that token's attack equals the attack of the monster attacking into your a attack position. <laughs> squ squirt squid. I'm getting power frame flashbacks. And this thing does have a bonus effect. If it's in your leftmost or rightmost zones, your opponent cannot target it with attacks with monsters whose attack is less than this thing's defense, which is where that 1800 d defense power is coming in. And it doesn't say original defense, so presumably you could boost this with something like Mr. Boy. And your opponent will just attack the Mr. Boy. Ring of Magnetism in Savage Coliseum. And that all out attack card. So all the cards go into attack mode. So they don't just put their stuff in defense. Wait, is that only your guys? I don't even remember. To get this thing to work the way it was intended, you need like seven cards. It stinks. And what's the worst part about Squirt Squid? His effect is once per turn. It's not a hard once per turn. It's a soft once per turn. But still, you probably normal summon this thing in past. It's a once per turn effect. Like, wow. Uh, they didn't just want to give it to you, you know? They just didn't want to make the card function. Like, oh, your opponent attacks into it. It scooches over. Attack into it again. Scooches over. And then if your opponent is an absolute moron, they just gave you five tokens or something. Four tokens. But no, they wouldn't even let you do that. Your best option is to put it in the second to left or second to right and let it scooch over one so it gets its full effect. Your opponent would have to be dumb to even attack into it anyway without all that other crap stuck on the field. But like, it's a squid. You spook it, it inks. Oh, you guys made me eat. <laughs> that's good card design. Because you know, that's how it works in Yu-Gi-Oh. You, to, to get a card to work with some way using established game mechanics and the rules of the game and actually function in a way that somehow resembles something that's not a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. Like for instance, the real life 
defense mechanisms of an actual squid and actually have it translate to a, a, a workable function in the game is impressive card design. And every time they do that, it's always bad. So we can't have fun this game. This game is this game is sans fun. You can't have fun. Nope. If, if cards can't be fun, it's, gonna be, it's bad if it's fun. Number two is uh, The Bride of Chucky. Fuck Martha Stewart! Child's Play is a continuous spell card. Oh, this should be great. I bet you anything, it doesn't do anything. Each time your opponent summons a monster, gain 300 life points. It doesn't do anything. Your opponent can't destroy your monsters by battle if you have over 10,000 life points. The most interesting thing about this card is to actually see the five digit life point printed on a card. It's a little weird. It's like that uh, fusion of all the sacred beasts that has the, the 10,000 printed on it for its attack power special effect thing. It's weird to see on a card, you know, because everything's in kind of like thousands. It's ending at nine. But hey, you know what? You can have more life points. Metaphys taught me that one. However, the biggest problem with this card is gaining 300 life points. Gaining life points in general just isn't very good in this game because life points really don't matter. But gaining 300 to some try to dissuade your opponent from extra linking you is never going to happen. Your opponent would gladly give you double your current life points if it means you simply can't play the game and lose. This thing's not a replacement for Maxi. I'm not sure what it is. I guess it's best functions in a deck like Arrow Mage where they do something when they gain life points so they make use out of the life point gaining. But that's not making life point gains good. That's just the random thing they decided to make that deck use. That deck would work exactly the same way if it was burn damage. It really wouldn't matter. It's just like life point modulation. So it's not the life points gaining that's good in that. It's just that that's how the cards work. So I'm not really sure what the point of this card would be. Its best function would be to like play it in a really dumb stall deck and just you play one game for 40 minutes and you're up like 2,000 life points and you win because of the end of match procedures. My hippo token deck does need a win con. And we do have some honorable mentions this time around, which is sweet. The problem with these two honorable mentions are I really wasn't sure to call them bad because they do have functions. It's just their functions are kind of not what they were intended to be. So it's kind of hard to quantify that. Uh, they certainly aren't, wouldn't be used the way I think they were intended, but they still at least have a function, I guess. The first one is Unisong Tuning. Target a tuner in either graveyard and one monster on the field. The monster on the field's level becomes that tuner monster's level, and it becomes a tuner, and then you banish the tuner. Now, banishing a tuner from the graveyard to turn a guy on the field into a tuner is at least kind of neat. The fact that this has got zombie stuff on the artwork implies that that's what you'd be using it for. However, your main playmaker that's putting things in the graveyard is Unizombie, which is already a tuner. It's even on the artwork of the card. It's in the name, and you don't need it. <laughs> so obviously this card's gonna be dead most of the time, unless you're trying to, like, I don't know, uh, synchro vampires? Ugh. But what this thing could actually be used for is a really, 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 really crappy replacement for Called by the Grave. Because if your opponent pitches like a Ash Blossom to the grave, that thing is a tuner for some reason. So you could use this card to banish it from their opponent's graveyard if you're playing against something like Salamandrates, which could recur the Ash Blossom from the graveyard. That's not good. You could just do that, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you wouldn't. Because it's not negating the effect. You might as well just, you should just play Called by the Grave. It's at three again. But if you needed four copies, I guess this isn't... Okay, this is a terrible option for that. But... DD Crow's better, but again, it does at least have a function. The other one's Speed Burst Dragon. Speed Burst Dragon has a weird effect that when you take burn damage, you can special summon this card, your opponent takes the same burn damage, and then you recover half of the life points you lost due to that burn damage. Specifically, it's half of the life points you dealt to your opponent in case there was some weird game scenario where the burn damage that he does is actually less than the ones you took somehow. I don't know how that would ever happen, but I guess that's what they're going for. I don't know why. When this card is tribute, what? Tribute summoned again. You can add two rocket monsters from your deck to your hand. Okay. At least it's, uh, at least it, at least it gets you some, some searches. Two searches is good. It's bad on a tribute summon, but it's a good search. So, you know, that, that kind of, that kind of kept them off the list. I think the objective was to use this in rockets because it's obviously a search card for the deck. However, again, just like the last card, I don't think it was really, it's a, 
It's how it would be used if it ever saw play would be not how it was intended. And this one, it'd be some really weird side deck option against a burn deck. And because you gain some life points back on that little rebate that it does, if it's like close to end of match, I feel like a broken record with this end of match procedure is crap. But you could probably cheese a game with it. So it's a dark dragon, could be worse. And before we get to number one, today's sponsor is MetaMats as always. If you guys want a custom claws playmat, please go to the link down in the description below. Use the old uh, promo code for Davinator1212, which is uh, Troll the Meta. Do I not even remember my own catchphrase anymore? That's pretty bad. Use the promo code Troll the Meta, and you'll get 10% off your purchase. Helps the channel, helps out MetaMats, and you can get a custom cloth playmat, which are the only thing I play on. The only thing I lose on? And I would actually say that uh, regardless of whether they're a sponsor or not. I just really like their mats. They're really nice to play on. Doubling up the double-sided mat. Ooh, really scoogey. Feels good. So go check them out. Are you ready for this? Demonetized! And number one is, oh boy, Extraceratops. The best thing about this card is the artwork, because it looks like they're filming a really bad movie in, in the artwork. I can relate. What makes this card bad is that its, it's activation condition uh, is super, super specific. When a monster in an extra deck zone is destroyed by a monster in a main deck zone by battle and sent to the graveyard, so it needs to go to the graveyard too, you can special summon this card from your graveyard to the owner of the extra zoned monsters field. So it's like, you can't even like crash your Link monster into like their guy just to summon this thing from the grave for whatever reason why you'd want to do that. I have no idea, but let's just say that's what you needed to do. It would go to their field, but why though? It is an earth level one warrior, because it's not really a dinosaur, it's a guy in a dinosaur costume. Which, you know, that seems as oldish. I guess you could probably summon him from the deck and then then put him in the grave with Link Karibo and then you have him at your disposal in order to summon later for more Link material. However, your Link Karibo could crash into their Link monster. I don't know why you would do that, but that's how it would work. And if this thing summoned itself by its effect and it's destroyed, it doesn't say by battle or card effect, so I guess that's good. You draw a card. Oh man, you put in all that work, you get an upstart goblin. Thank you, Extra Ceratops, you beautiful son of a bitch. It's incredibly disrespectful. This isn't even good for 2005. This is this is some mid GX level of just wonk. But anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I couldn't stand it. Talking about bad cars is fun because it's like, wow, they either tried to make this really bad or they didn't try to make it good. I can never tell. But guys, let me in the comments below what you guys think of this series if you want to see the next new set of the game get ripped apart. <laughs> and remember guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!